so many familiar faces, so many clients uh, joining us. Bill Dyer, good to see you, Bill. Um, uh, Brandon, awesome. Steve, uh, Rajesh. Now, we've got a whole bunch of people, those who are on the live streams over in Facebook. If you go to appointmentsunleashed.com, you'll be able to jump here with me in Zoom and join uh, those who are with me to uh, have their questions, uh, their strategies, their ideas answered uh, here. So if you want some coaching from me, um, I'm going to be sharing uh, some of the concepts with those who are joining me here to help them generate the very thing that they want to generate, and that is a bucket load of uh of appointments. So uh, welcome all those who are here with me in Zoom, those who are live with me uh, on the interwebs, uh, welcome as well. Uh, uh, so uh, I will handle questions and comments. Um, I know those who are joining me here in the chats, uh, you'll be able to chat with me um, uh, here, which is awesome. So um, uh, first of all, I want to welcome you to probably the most important thing if you want to be generating revenue or sales for your businesses to uh, generate appointments. So I'm kind of going to go through um, the structure of generating appointments. We're going to go through some mindset around generating appointments. I also want to go through, and I'm going to show you, one thing I want to do is I want every single person who's either watching this live or here with me in Zoom to actually generate an appointment today with somebody who is interested in what you have to offer. So I'm gonna walk you through a strategy, a really simple strategy that you can use to go and generate an appointment immediately, right? That's the, this is like on demand, right? So, uh, so I'm gonna walk you through that, through that process. Um, tomorrow, I'm gonna to hop back here live again, I'm gonna show, show you uh, some different tactical things and strategic things you can do to build some consistency, to put some automation around your appointment, uh, to get you into more of the philosophy of uh, building a cadence uh, of appointments. I have a philosophy or I have a, a thing that I do to teach the people that I work with. Uh, uh, and uh, essentially what I try and help them understand is if you were to have one conversation per day with a business owner, now this person doesn't necessarily have to be somebody who's a prospect, but somebody who actually runs a business. I'm assuming those who are watching this replay or either watching this now live on my lives or here with me in Zoom, uh, I'm, I'm assuming that, that the people you serve are people who are in business, right? But if we have the philosophy of just having one conversation with a business owner per day uh, in our business, over a, over a period of a month, over a four week month, we're looking at 20 conversations, 20 conversations with people who are running a business, right? Who are running a business. Um, and of those 20 conversations, even if you just ask questions, took an interest, I will guarantee you of those 20 conversations, three to five of those conversations will turn into clients or people asking you on how you can help them, right? Three to five or more will turn into people who are going, this is all very good, Thanks for the interest. By the way, what do you do? How can you help us, right? So the philosophy of one conversation a day, normally when I look at this from setting up the automations or setting up the processes, it normally takes about four to six weeks to get into the habit of having one appointment per day. Now, there are some things that I'm doing in our coaching programs right now where within a matter of less than two weeks, in fact, about 10 days, we can go from, uh, 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 sporadic appointments to having between one and three appointments every single day. One and three appointments every single day with a targeted niche audience, with your audience. That's what we're working on in my coaching programs. And we're seeing people engaging about 20 conversations a day that turn, in between, turn into about one to three appointments per day of people who are qualified in calendar, all in automation, all in automation. That's a pretty cool scenario to go through. Not something I'm gonna go into great detail here because there's some setup and there's some process and there's some strategy. That's something that I do in my coaching programs. What I wanna do here is just to give you a format and a framework to make sure that you at least consistently open the door to having somebody to speak to every single day. Maybe one person or more than one person every single day. So my goal here today and even tomorrow is for you to actually book an appointment, right? Not necessarily live on the training, but whether you get off the training or uh, whether you try the strategy whilst I'm talking to you, my goal is for you to get an appointment. An appointment with somebody who may be interested in what you have to offer to be able to close a deal. That's the game, 
right? So, so, uh, and I want to try and make this as simple as possible. And the strategy I'm going to share with you works like gangbusters. I've done, uh, some people have actually seen me do this live. I know Danella's seen me do this live at live events where I've literally crafted a simple message, send out the message and people making sales within 24 hours, right? So I know what I'm about to teach you or share with you does work. And I know that if you follow through uh, with some of the tactical things that I share with you today, you will open the door to have more conversations with people who are at least interested in what you have to offer, right? So uh, there's three people that generally turn up to my live trainings. There's number one, you're just kind of starting out and you're trying to get to your first clients and you're trying to make a buck and you're trying to get this thing going. So that's number one. Number two, you're a freelancer. You've got a handful of clients that you serve right now and you want more, right? Uh, you know, you might be in a, a situation where you get into up and down cycles of uh, revenue. You might have clients that leave you every three or four months and you've got to go get new customers, but you're a freelancer. You're, you're, you're in, the, in the second category. The third category is you're an agency. You've got a team of people, you might be the head of sales or you might have a salesperson, appointment setter, a project manager, a customer service person, a fulfillment person. You might have two or three people in your business and you. And so you're an agency and ultimately what you're here for is you want more appointments to generate more clients to be able to scale, right? So there's generally three people. The fourth person, the fourth category is you're an established business. So what do I mean by an established business? You're the CEO, you got a marketing team, a sales team, a customer service team, an operations director, you actually have a company, right? You've got a company and you want your sales team to crush it by making lots of appointments. So you're either going to be a one, just starting out, two, you're a freelancer, got some clients, uh, want to do more. And number three, you're an agency, you want to scale. Number four, you're a business owner. For those of you here live with me, or if you're in the Facebook group, are you one, two, three, or four? One, two, three, or four. So just put in the chat. So we've got somebody starting out. Thank you. So this is just, uh, this is an interactive set, part of the session here. Just asking questions. Danella's got a team. Good to see you here, Danella. Howard's a number two freelancer. Ivan's a number one. Uh, Monique, two. Got some clients. Awesome. Okay. Um, uh, Steve, a couple of people. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So we've got lots of twos. People who are freelancing want to scale. We've got a few people kind of just starting out. Uh, every now and again, I get a three. I'm just looking on the Facebook here. People are responding. Uh, there's a couple of, yep, there's a couple of twos and threes. All right. So what I'm about to share with you, uh, it will impact and affect everyone. It doesn't matter what stage you're in, right? Um, this is the philosophy or the strategy that I would take. I've spent 33 years of my life building businesses, uh, developing companies, building software companies, agencies, service types, productization, product uh, category businesses. Uh, I've spent most of my uh, adult life uh, doing this, right? I've helped thousands of people in their business across the world. I've spoken to hundreds of thousands of people. We've had businesses where we had more than 5,000 clients. So I've kind of done a lot of things along the way, right? And probably the biggest uh, pleasure that I get is sharing ideas, trying to simplify complex ideas uh, and make them a lot easier to apply and give clarity and focus and the ability to take some action in that process. That's probably the most fun that I get to do with what I do, right? I currently have two agencies. I also run a coaching uh, company where we help people to scale their agencies. So I've been around for a long time. I've pretty much seen a lot, but I also have a lot of mentors. I've had a lot of people who've trained me in sales. I've had probably some of the greatest sales trainers in the world that I've paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to, to share some of the ideas I'm going to be sharing with you today, right? To make it easy for you to go and do the one thing that, that eludes people or there's a lack of focus uh, to being consistent in generating appointments, right? So, uh, so let's kind of get into the concept of uh, let's go and get some appointments. Um, so I just want to, so I'm making sure that I'm following through, oops, on what I'm doing, right? So um, first of all, with appointments is, and this is a big problem. We are focused on the wrong thing. When it comes to making appointments, most of us are focusing on the wrong thing. What we're focusing on is outcome. When we think about generating revenue, we're thinking about, think about this, we're generating revenue. We want more money. We want more clients, more sales, more profit. Uh, we need more leads. We need more contacts. We're focusing on all the other things, right? And what we're doing is we're focusing on the wrong thing. 
We're focusing on the outcome. We're not focusing on the cause of the problem. The cause of the problem is what has to happen first before you make the sales, get the money, you know, uh, generate the revenue, do all those things, get the leads, get the contacts. What has to happen before that? And what has to happen before that is an appointment, a conversation. That happens before. So what we tend to do is we tend to react to the wrong thing, right, when we're looking at this. So just to give you perspective, right, if you were to ask yourself this question, knowing what I know now, how would I 4X how I get appointments? Knowing what I know about making appointments or getting an appointment or having a conversation with somebody, what would I do right now to 4X what I have, right? 4X or 10X my appointment generation. Knowing what I know, what would I do? And some of you already, your brain is starting to think about the things that you can do to go and generate an appointment. You're automatically zeroing in, this is what I can do. I can follow up, I can send an email. I can pick up the phone. I can go and talk to that person. I can have, uh, uh, get that uh, uh, get reacquainted with that referral or that connection. All of a sudden, your brain goes into how am I going to go get an appointment, not where am I going to get a lead or where am I going to make a sale or how am I going to get a client, right? So what we focus on most becomes our reality. That's the thing that you've got to think about here, right? And this is what happens. So that's our mind. Um, there's this really cool... Uh, thing. Uh, some people talk about this. Uh, I, I'm not a big, you know, a lot of people talk about things like manifestation. Uh, I just call that magical thinking. Um, but, uh, uh, but the idea of there's this uh, part of our brain kind of sits in the sleep center. It's right in the middle here, uh, sort of just down below the, the, the interior of the frontal lobe. And it's called a reticular activating system. The reticular activating system is a filtering. It's like having a brain filter. And in that filter, it filters everything. And it has no prejudices. It doesn't, there's nothing, like everything is right. For your reticular activating system in your brain, all the billions of pieces of information that are happening on a microsecond in your brain is processed through this part of the brain. And so everything is okay. And what it does is it, Traits triggers to pick up commonalities, things that you uh, that you're paying attention to. It starts to allow you to see or pay attention to those things. So, a perfect example of uh, your reticular activating system working is uh, uh, if you've ever bought a car, right? And let's say you went and bought a brand new uh, uh, Chevy Challenger, and it was uh, a black Chevy Challenger, right? And all of a sudden. You start, you drive out and you think, I'm, I've got the coolest black Chevy Challenger. Like there's not too many of these on the road, but all of a sudden you're driving home and then you start seeing black Chevy Challengers everywhere, right? You start seeing all the things that, that your brain is zeroing on, it's paying attention to, right? It's what we focus on most that becomes our reality, right? If we focus on uh, challenge, frustration, drama, guess what? Lots of challenge, frustration, drama. It's a very interesting mechanism that we have in our brain that zeroes into focusing on the things that we're wanting to pay attention to. We're making choices both subconsciously and consciously uh, to pay attention to things that essentially nine times out of 10 may not be the things we actually want, right? But our brain automatically goes, oh, there's an idea. You're thinking about this. Let me show you all the examples of where that appears. Oh, you're feeling a bit stressed right now. Let me demonstrate to you all the stressful things. Let me show you all the things. Let's compound the stress, right? Oh, you're feeling really calm, serene. Let me represent all the calm and serene things around you. Your brain is an incredible power, right, that does this. I would love to demonstrate how powerful your brain is. For those who have been in the Zooms, can you just give me a thumbs up to, uh, just give me a thumbs up if you're up for a really simple experiment. Just give me a thumbs up. I can see you on the video. All right. So for those of you who've got brown tiles here who have no camera, it'd be really great if you can uh, turn on your camera so I can see you uh, and I can look you in the eyes, not around the eyes. This is not a hypno hypnotic uh, state that I'm going to share with you. Right. But it's a really simple, simple tactic. And if you think about what I'm about to walk you through, think about how this will show you or demonstrate to you how powerful uh, your brain is in terms of being able to create a situation. Right. So what I want you to do for those of you who are watching me and those who, who are trusting me, I'd love for you. You can close your eyes or leave your eyes open. It doesn't matter. Whichever you choose to do is OK.
But um, imagine you're standing right now in front of your refrigerator. You're not talking to me. You're not listening to me. You've gone to your refrigerator and the refrigerator is right there in front of you. And you can see the door and you open the door. And as you open the door, you actually feel the cool air just flush on your face through when you open the, open the door. So you open the refrigerator door, you feel that fresh, cool air coming out of the refrigerator. And in your refrigerator, you only have one item. And that item is a lemon. And it's really bright and yellow. It's a beautiful, bright yellow lemon. And you go and reach in the refrigerator and you can feel the air, the cool air on your arm. And you pick up that lemon and you feel the coolness of the lemon in your hand. And what you wanna do is you bring that lemon right up to your nose and you just breathe in Take a, and you can just slightly smell the tingency that that citrusy smell from the lemon, and you can actually feel the waxy peel, uh, the, the the structure of the lemon in your hand. And what I want you to do is you got that lemon nice and cool in your hand. You put it on the carving board, and you take out a carving knife, and in your mind's eye, you cut the lemon open. And as you cut open, you see the juices starting to spill out. I'd like you to pick up half the lemon, bring the lemon right up to your nose, and just. Take a deep breath of that lemon. You can actually feel that the citrusy smell is actually a lot stronger. And what I want you to do, you see the juice is dripping down. I want you to take a really big, hard bite into the lemon. Just bite as hard as you can and wash all those juices in your mouth as much as you can as you're biting into the lemon, right? And so what I want you to do is I want you to put your lemon down and now focus back on me on the camera if you're watching me, right? Now, for those of you here, uh, all I need is a thumbs up. How many people felt the cool air of the refrigerator uh, washing over them as they open the fridge door. Anybody feel the cool air? Just give me a thumbs up. Some people felt the cool air. Okay, great. How many people felt the cool lemon in their hand when they picked up the lemon? Give me a thumbs up if you felt the cool lemon when you picked it up. Isn't that interesting? How many people noticed that the, the their mouth started to water as they were bringing the lemon closer up to their nose and when they bit in, all of a sudden, there's all this saliva building up in your mouth. Who's got saliva in their mouth? Just give me a thumbs up when you bit into the lemon right? Isn't that funny, right? All we did was create an experience through a thought, right? All we did is we created physical reactions because we have a frame of reference purely by thinking. We didn't eat a lemon. We imagined it. We created that in our hand to say, hey, this is what it would be like. And our body and our brain react in a way to respond to the experience that we have with the lemon. So think about that. If we can do that in our mind's eye as a trigger, right? Think about how we focus and pay attention to things. Think about how we focus and we pay attention to things. What we focus, if we're focusing on, if we start sitting there thinking, hey, let's get some leads, right? Well, that's not making an appointment. Hey, let's uh, make some, let's do an offer, right? Well, that's not actually physically making an appointment, right? Unless there's follow through, right? What is the action that is actually going to get the appointment? That's the only thing. If you want more appointments, that's all you need to do, right? That's all you need to do is say, what am I going to do to just make the appointment? Nothing else. No lead generation, no sales, no more money, no profit. Just the thing that is going to make the appointment. That's it. Now, I want to just share with you what stops you from making an appointment, right? So we get up in the morning. And uh, some of us get caught up in distractions, right? We're kind of a little bit all over the place, right? Uh, we've got some distractions. We've got drama. We might have some drama going on. So we pay attention to a bit of drama, right? Um, we've got no real focus, no clarity. So we kind of meander uh, uh, to get things going, right? And so this is not going to help you make appointments, right? The second thing, and this is another thing that people tend to do from a behavioral point of view, is they get organized, right? So I want to check my emails, make sure I've got my email set. And then I want to move the, the paper or the, my notes from this side of the bench. And I want to move it over to this side of my desk. And then I want to remove, uh, I've got some folders, I've got some post notes, I've got to get rid of those post notes, I've got to put those over there. And then I've got to do, I've got to uh, sort of uh, organize myself, I've got to process stuff, right? And so before you know it, it's lunch, right? I've been organizing, processing and shifting and reading emails and it's lunch right? So that's the second mindset that people get into with, and they feel like they've been busy. You've been incredibly productive organizing. It's amazing, right? Huge impact on your business, right? So we're in the organization mode, the processing stuff mode, right? And then we think, okay, there are some people say, well, we've got, you know, we've got to do something, we've got to get more leads, we've got to make more contacts, we've got to go and do the, you know, make more contacts, do my 20 contacts a day, um, uh, got to get some leads, I've got to fire off that lead generation, maybe run that ad, get some leads over there. Uh, maybe get into LinkedIn and do some LinkedIn stuff. And I'm going to get some leads, right? 
So you're going to get some leads, but still no appointments, right? So there are three things that will happen if you if you're going. I'm into my day. I'm gonna help, I'm gonna grow my business. I'm either gonna start my day being distracted, drama, no focus. I'm either gonna get organized, so I'm gonna invest time shifting things around, not actually achieving that much, right? Um, or I'm gonna go great. I'm gonna get into the routine of making some contacts, right? Or the fourth thing is is I need to make some appointments now. I need to go and make some appointments now. That's all I need to do. I don't need to organize. I don't need to do leads. I don't do anything. I've just got to make an appointment now, right? And so that's the key, right? What we focus on most, that's what becomes our reality. If we focus on everything else other than making an appointment, then we will not make appointments. And the one thing, when I've talked to people, I ask this question all the time, Daniela Howard, a few people have been asked this question. I ask this question, how many appointments did you have last week and the week before and the week before that? And the average person will do this to me, zero or one or two appointments, right? Zero, one or two is the average number of appointments between zero and two is the average number of appointments of most people in our business. That's the number. Now, last time I checked, it is very, very difficult to grow a business to have without conversations. Very difficult in our world to generate clients without engaging prospective customers. It's impossible to do that. So again, what are you focusing on, right? Just focus on appointments and nothing else, right? Build a routine around appointments. I'm going to talk tomorrow about ways in which you can leverage that where it doesn't require you to make the appointment, right? But initially, if it's you, then that's what you want to build into the routine, into a routine, right? So um, you want to, that's, that's, that's the key. Shift your focus to just setting appointments, nothing else. That in and of itself is going to change the trajectory of what you do in the day. That's number one, right? So... Uh, you've got to look at building processes. I'm going to give you one process that all of you can do and apply to generate an opportunity in a moment, right? So um, without a plan, a famous general once said, who was probably the greatest battlefield commander of all time, General George S. Patton, said, without a plan, with just a bunch of tourists looking up at the sky, wandering around, doing nothing right? Without a plan, we're a tourist, right? So have a plan to make appointments. Set up a plan to make appointments. How many appointments are you going to generate per day? Make it so for yourself, right? Now, if you want to do this a little bit differently, think about it. You want to generate a client. My question to you is how many conversations do you need to have to generate a customer? So how many appointments, how many conversations, not, not, not just only qualifying appointments, just presentations, how many presentations you have to do to generate one customer, right? So you might think, well, to generate a client, my worst case scenario, I'm going to talk to one in five people. One in five people will turn to a client or one in four will turn to a client or one in three will turn into a client. Whatever that number is, right? So we've got one, now we're working for three. We've got to have three presentations or five presentations. So my next question is, how many conversations do you need to have to get those said five presentations? You may need to have... 10 or 15 conversations to get those five presentations. I generally find that it's a one in two. Normally it's a one in two. Uh, so if you're talking to somebody, if you're making sense to them, if they're in the right pocket, or they're, they're in the, the right sphere or framework of being a prospective customer, it's generally 50% will be a conversion from a conversation to an actual sales presentation. It's normally about one in two. If it's a little bit more than that, you've got to think about dialing your message, who you're working with, who you're targeting, right? So now if I know to get a presentation, I've got to roughly talk to two or three people, that's going to give me an idea of how many people I need to speak to to give me the number of clients I want in my business. So it's like we're working backwards. So to get one customer, I've got to do five presentations. To get five presentations, I've got to speak to uh, 10 or 15 people. Uh, to do that in a week, I've got to speak to roughly three people a day. I've got three conversations a day. That's it. 
just touch base with three people. Can I talk to you? Can I talk to you? Now, if your intent is just to do that thing, that's the thing, right? If your focus is just to have those three conversations, I will guarantee you any person watching this training, any person here live with me, if that was your intention, you would have three conversations a day. And if you had three conversations a day, you'll be generating one client a week. That's basically what it boils down to. Or two conversations a day will turn into one client a week. Now, if you had one client a week, that would be a game changer for a lot of people, especially those who are freelancing and those who are starting out, right? That's like three, four clients a month. That's insane, right? Do that three months in a row, you've got 12 clients, you're really in business, right? But all we're trying to do and what I want you to focus on is just to get to your next paying customer. That's it. I don't want you to get to the next three or five or 10, whatever that plan is. All I want you to do today is to make a plan to create, to get your next paying customer, right? That's all you need to do, right? So basically for all of us, it might be having three or it might be having between five and 10 initial conversations. That's all you need to focus on. One to two a day, one to two a day. Today, we're going to get one or two. Today, we're going to get one or two. I'm going to walk you through exactly what to do, right? So instead of having a sales plan, we now have an appointment plan. We know that the appointment plan turns into a client. What we're looking to do is just do what it takes to get the next customer. Because once we get the next customer, then we can get the next customer, right? So one thing I want you to think about as we're going through this training is why, why should I, as a prospective customer, buy from you. I want to know, and I'd like you to bullet point, don't type this in the thing, right? Um, I, I want to know, right, is I'd like you to think about bullet point, right? Why should I invest in your services? Steve, Danella, Miles, Howard, Rajesh, Ivan, Brandon, Monique, uh, Laptop, whoever you are, Bill Dyer, Chris, why should I buy from you, right? Write down the bullet points. Think of three or four things as to why I should buy from you. Today, right, I'm a business owner. You can help me with your strategy or service. I want you to think about it. Why should I buy from you? That's the first thing you need to think about, right, is why should somebody even listen to you? What is it that you've got to offer that's going to make a difference to them? Why is it important for them to sit down with you? That's the first thing you have to own. If you can't own that, they won't buy it, right? So the first thing I want to start with is what are your whys, right? What are your whys, right? Rajesh says, get to digital selling within two weeks. Why else? Why else should they buy from you, Rajesh, right? If anybody wants to share in the chat, why should I buy from you? Why should I buy from you, Howard, Steve, Danella, Miles? Just type in the chat, why should I buy your service? You need to know that, right? Why is it important to deal with you? Because if I'm, if I'm unable to do this thing with you, then I'm going to be looking for somebody else, right? So why should I buy from you is the key. Uh, Bill says to maximize existing opportunities. Okay, uh, Bill, whatever that means, you need to elaborate, not to me, but to yourself. You need to be very, very clear about what that means to a client, right? Because the more you can articulate that, the more the client can connect with that, right? That's, you know, if we're broad, more, you know, uh, expertise, experience, and social proof. How? Absolutely, right? Your expertise in what you offer, right? The uh, experience that you have in generating the outcome, the social proof of here's other people that did exactly what you want to do to get that result. These are all reasons why uh, I should buy from you, right? These are your whys. The more whys you have, and the more whys have to be what's in it for them, not what's in it for you, right? What's in it for them? That's the radio with them, right? Radio station WIIFM right? What's in it for them, right? So if you can, if it's what's in it for them, right? Brandon says exclusive access to clients instead of sharing leads on house. Awesome. Get direct access. Be first choice of people who want to buy your service before they talk to anybody else. Being first choice is a very powerful motivator, right? Being direct, getting direct access to a buyer. Being first choice over and above a competitor, always really cool, right? Um, 
uh, uh, Monique says, we have an ISA uh, to filter all opportunities that come in uh, never shared leads. Okay, so you qualify. You, what you do is you have a highly targeted, highly qualified lead or opportunity for them to sell their service directly. That's a great why. You have a highly filtered and qualified buyer, prospective buyer that they can do business with. Think of the word, listen to the words that I'm using. If I was to say to you, Monique, can I bring you somebody that's been completely filtered, uh, gone through a process to identify exactly what they're looking for when it comes to your services? Is that the type of customer you'd ideally like to sit in front of, front of? yes or no? There's a message, right? If I can filter and give you exactly, right? I know Howard, you offer appointment setting services. Right, you should be. It's really weird. You're here on the appointments uh, unleashed uh, webinar, and you offer appointment setting services. I just saw the irony in that. Um, but what it shows is you're out there constantly learning, mate. You're one of my favourites who constantly join me. But you're out there learning. You know, you're always adding and you're always learning and trying to improve what you do. But you set appointments, right? I don't want to send you a lead. I want to put a buyer in your calendar. I want to put a buyer in your calendar that will show up and that you can answer their questions and help them buy. Is that what you're looking for? That's a great why, right? I don't wanna send you a lead. A lead is irrelevant. I wanna send you a buyer. I wanna put the appointment in your calendar with your salesperson. That person's vetted, filtered, and they're interested. Is there any better opportunity than that to sit down in front of somebody? That's a great why. Right now, do you have a system that filters, puts somebody in your calendar, right? Uh, where we can give you the opportunity to help somebody who's got the interest, who's put their hand up, says, yeah, I need to know a little bit more. I'm interested in buying what you have to offer. Is that the type of opportunity you're looking for, right? That's a great offer. That's probably the best appointment setting offer you can make, right? Let me put a deal in your hands. Let me connect you with the buyer. Let me give you the buyer hands on heart that they're interested. Show up, right? That's huge. That's a huge offer, right? So, those are the things. If you can answer the whys, you want to use the whys, right, as part of your engagement, right? You want to use the whys as part of your engagement, okay? So moving on to our little uh, process here, right? Um, now, here's the other thing. I find in when I'm uh, focused on the income generation of my business, which always starts with the opportunity for an appointment, I have to commit to doing it, right? I'm committed to making two appointments today. I'm committed to making five appointments today. I'm committed to doing that. If you're not committed to doing that, it ain't going to happen. We can talk about it all day long. I can sit here. You can sit in hours listening to me, right? But it ain't going to happen unless you're committed to it. So if you're absolutely committed to this idea, then more often than not and more likely it will happen. Uh, in, for, there's a group of people that I coach uh, in Consulting Champions. And one of the things we did, uh, we did it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, and uh, Adam, one of the guys that I coach, right? I sat there and he says, you know, look, I want to talk to bigger clients. I don't want to talk to smaller clients. Well, great. You want to talk to bigger clients? Then just talk to bigger clients, right? <laughs> like it's a choice. No one's telling you you can't, right? No one's telling you you can't. It's a choice, right? He says, I want to talk to bigger clients. Great. He says, I'm going to go make appointments. Awesome. Great. Uh, how many are you going to make, Adam? Uh, well, I want to make like four or five, right? When are you going to make them by? Today. Great. Next day, comes back, right? Three meetings with bigger clients. Three meetings with companies that are going to spend tens of thousands of dollars, not $1,500 a month, right? Clients that are going to, in fact, you got a meeting with a massive client, right? Why did he get that meeting? He was committed to getting the appointment, Right? So number one, be committed to however many appointments you want to generate, right? Be committed. We're focused on generating appointments. We're going to commit to an outcome. If we commit to the outcome, if we were committed to having one conversation with a business owner per day, guess what will happen? You will have that one conversation if you're committed. Without a commitment, it doesn't exist. Without a commitment, it doesn't exist, Right? So that's really important just to give you. So I guess what you're hearing here, just to give you perspective here, is a little bit of the psychology that you need to be thinking, the mindset that you need to be thinking about being very consistent in generating appointment opportunities. That's what. That's essentially what I'm walking you through here, right? I haven't gone to the pragmatic, this is what we're going to do to get the appointment, 
right? I haven't done that just yet, right? But what I've done is if you think about what I've just shared, number one, focus on just making the appointment. Number two, you've got a plan, right? How many people do you need to com communicate to to get one sale? How many appointments, how many conversations do you need to have to get yourself to that next buying customer? Not the next three, not the next five, not the next 10, just the next one. The one that's going to put money in your bank account where you make an offer and send an invoice and they pay the invoice or you take the credit card over the phone and that's it. That's it. All you got to take, right? Because once you've got that one, then you're going to put the foot down and get the next one. You don't stop, right? You just keep going, right? So it's the same with appointments, right? I'm going to walk you through a psychology that if you do this, you're going to, this is, you'll get into a habit of making appointments really easy. Right, this is a very pragmatic and really simple way to do this. So big thing, be committed to an exact outcome. Be committed to the exact outcome, right? Because if you don't, if you're not committed or you are committed and you don't achieve the outcome, you're going to adjust your strategy because you're going to commit to it the next day and go, I've got to get this done. So what have I got to change, right? There's a fantastic, uh, I've mentioned this, people who know me, I've mentioned this a few times. There's a guy called Jai Jiang, J-A-I, J-A-I-N-G. If you go to Ted, uh, he talks about rejection, right? And his goal was to be rejected over 100 times. I want to be rejected for 100 times. So he used to ask things, crazy things for people to receive the rejection, right? He used to ask crazy things. So he would ask things like he'd rock up to a random stranger with a plant in his hand, knock on their front door and say, hey, can I plant this free plant in your front garden? And they're either going to say yes or no. The first person he asked said, no, I don't want a free plant in my garden, right? Uh, but, uh, you know, so, and then he asked this question, well, why? Why don't you free plant? Because I don't know who you are. I don't want a free plant. What's the plant going to look like, right? I, I'm a bit proud of my garden. But you know what? I know Mary over the road, she loves, she will definitely take a free plant in the garden. If you go to Mary... And so what did Jai do? He went over the road to Mary and said, hey, I just spoke to your neighbor, Sue, and I offered her the free plant. She didn't want to take the free plant, but she said that you'd be interested in the free plant. Would you like me to plant this free plant in your front yard? Right? And Mary went, yes. Right? But he went through rejection. So he would ask for crazy things like he went to a Dunkin' Donuts and he said to the Dunkin' Donuts, hey, can I ask you, can you make me the Dunkin' Donuts in the shape of the Olympic rings and then glaze the donuts with the colors of the Olympic rings? Can you do that for me? And the guy looked at him and said, hang on a second, let me go and speak to my manager, <laughs> right? And then he came back and said, yep, we can do that for you, right? He asked the question, he was expecting a rejection, but the person went, mm, let me think about that, right? And made the offer. Many times he'd ask the question and they would say no. When they'd say no, he would ask this next question. Why did you say no to me? Why did you say no? Why did you reject my question, my offer? Right. And they would say things like, I don't know who you are. Um, I don't know what this thing is that you're offering me. I don't know why you're offering this to me. Uh, I don't really need this thing that you're offering to me. Right. He would ask that question. So this made him improve his approach in getting a better response of yes, as opposed to being rejected. No. But what it also taught him was that he it gave him a better understanding of what was going on. It gave him a better read on what he needed to do to, to prepare the person receiving the information, right, to be able to step into a favorable decision, right? So ask the question, like if, it's not, if you don't make an appointment today, what was it? What did you do? What didn't you do? What happened? What was the feedback, right? When you, had, when you made the attempt, right? Okay, what would you do to adjust that? How can you change that around, right? And then day two, you do that, right? So you want to commit to the appointment, right? The other thing is, is you want to get into a routine. You want to get into appointment setting mode, right? You want to get into appointment setting mode, yeah? Because if, we're, um, if we don't get ourselves into that routine, it's going to be very difficult. It's like a, it's like a, a sort of a jerky stop, start, stop, start, right? So here's the thing. Um, and I'm going to use a bit of a, a sports analogy, right? Uh, we just had... Uh, the Super Bowl, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, uh, knocked out the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, the greatest quarterback of all time, and Tom Brady wins the MVP for the fifth time in a row, right? Dude's been playing football, professional football, at the uh, highest level for more than 20 years now, 43 years of age. It's insanity. He's inhuman. There is a robot in there somewhere, 
right? How is that humanly possible that somebody could play at that level for 21 years and crush it and love him or hate him? It's pretty, and it's a pretty outstanding performance of, of, of a professional in his market. But one of the things that I know that Tom knows is you want to play your best shots first. You want to prep yourself for your best shots first. When Greg Norman plays a golf tournament, before he rocks up to the first tee, he's already hit a thousand practice balls. He's already hit a thousand practice balls before he got to the first tee of the golf tournament, right? He's playing his best shots. You look at a basketball player, right? I'm just trying to remember the team. I think the Detroit Pistons back in Isaiah Thomas days. Now I'm showing my age to uh, my audience here. Uh, back in the day when the Pistons were firing off and I can't remember who the coach was. But one of the things that the coach said is play, you want to play to your strengths. You want to play to where you make the shots, where the easiest play to make the shots. And what he did was, is he built routines around the players to say, where, what part of the court right? Do you have to be in to be able to know that you nail the basket? What part of the court do you need to be in where you know that you nail the basket, right? And so he would create plays to put players in their best positions and where they know they're going to hit that shot every single time, right? So what you want to do is you want to get into a situation where you want to start with the easy plays first, where you can slam dunk the shot, right? That's what that because once you get into that motion, once you get into that, I'm just trying to remember. One of my coaches used to used to. Uh, I'm trying, my name, the name is uh, is eluding me. One of the guys I used to look up to and who was a mentor of mine, uh, um, he would always say, "Get the easy appointments out of the way first, right? Get the easy appointments out of the way first because the easy ones will set the momentum up for the next ones, right? You you got It's like you're flexing a muscle because what happens is when you get into the cadence of getting a win it spurs on another win. You're building the momentum, right? So you start with the easy shots first, the first, the shots you know you can land, right? So the easy shots are start with your familiar list, right? Who do you know who needs help? You can ask the question, hey, I've got an opening in my schedule. Do you know anybody who needs help with this? You can start with an easy shot, right? Uh, Facebook, if you've got Facebook friends or people in Facebook or connections, right? You, or messenger connections, you can ask, hey, right, I'm going to walk you through a really simple strategy in just a moment, right? But Facebook connections, LinkedIn connections, who have you got in your sphere where you can ask who fits the category? Ask the shot. You've already got the connection, right? Take the easy shot first. Start with things like messenger, right? Look at all the follow-ups. Like there are people that you might have reached, reached out to who said, not right now, but next month, right? Or not right now, but next week. Right. So what you want to do is start with those lists first. Look for the easy shot, the easy layup. Right. First, that's where you want to start your appointment setting. You don't want to start your appointment setting where you don't know anybody. Right. Or you don't know that person. That person doesn't know you. That's the hard part. Right. That, that means we need to build some context to be able to do that. Right. So we start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share a strategy with you, a process where you can do this layup and open the door to generating appointments really fast, really fast. If you do this, some of you are gonna make an appointment within the next 24 hours or next 12 hours, next five hours, depending on what time of day it is, wherever you are in the world, in the next 24 minutes, right? Uh, you'll be able to do this if you follow through with this strategy. So I'm gonna show you the bank shot, layup shot, easy shot for an appointment. Uh, and it's a pretty simple process, right? You wanna pick one thing that you do really well and think about, why people need to sit down with you. We go back to that list of whys, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to send out this message. This is the message that I would recommend. And you can literally, this is, by the way, this is a very, very short script. So short. Anybody can do this. There's not a single person who's watching the replay, watching this video that can't do this thing that I'm asking you to do. And if you do this, you're going to open the door to generate an appointment almost in some cases immediately. And if you've got a little bit of a list, you'll get lots more appointments. You'll get a bucket loads of appointments if you do this, right? So it's really simple. The subject line is quick question, right? So subject line is quick question. Now, you can send this as an email. You can send this as a text message. You can send this as a LinkedIn message. You can send this as a Facebook message, messenger message. You can send this as a voice drop. You can send this as a video, right? 
quick question. That's the headline. That's the subject line, right? Quick question, right? Now, the next bit, this is the most complicated part and the part that is the really heavy script, right? Very, very complicated. Are you interested in? Are you interested in? Blank, right? Or if you know this person or you've, or you've sent out information to this person before on your list, you can ask it this way. Hey, are you still interested in doing blank? Are you still interested in getting appointments from Facebook? Are you still interested in getting appointments directly from Google Ads? Are you still interested in uh, getting rid of the tie kickers and only dealing with filtered qualified prospects? Are you interested in? Are you still interested? Are you interested in? Are you still interested? I know it was a really long script. It's really hard, a lot to remember. Very hard, very, very tough work. I know, right? So you're going to go to all the people, like you, like I'm going to, I've asked, I'm going to re-ask this question. Knowing what you know now, who can you send this message to? Knowing what you know now, who would you send this message to, right? Knowing what you know now, we're going to get an appointment. Who would you send this to, right? All you're asking is, Hey, quick question. Are you interested in blank Facebook ads, Google ads, uh, uh, automating sales, uh, automated follow-up? Uh, are you interested in running an email marketing campaign? Are you interested in, right, are you interested in, or are you still interested? People you've maybe reached out to before didn't quite get there and just say, hey, are you still interested in, in right? Now, if you do this on Messenger, you can just say yes or no. Preface it with a yes, reply, yes or no. So you can ask for the reply, yes or no, right? Yes or no, right? So a call to action, yes, I am interested. No, I'm not interested, right? Pretty simple. Text message, hey, quick question. Are you interested in? Please reply, yes or no, right? And some people are going to go no. And some people are going to go, yes. Now, to make this work like gangbusters, if, you get, if you're going to do this, be ready to respond in real time. Be ready to respond in real time. Uh, Rajesh, I'm not asking you to go to the cold list with a strategy. I'm asking you to go to low-hanging fruit with a strategy. Anybody you've spoken to, anybody you've reached out to, anybody that you've had any conversation with, anybody that said no to your offer, anybody you've pitched in the past, that, that list is getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? And then the other list is that familiar list. Friends, family, associates, colleagues, these are the familiar lists. I market to my familiar list all the time. All my friends and family know exactly what I do and they know exactly that I've got some space when I've got some space because I ask them, hey, I've got some space, can you help me out? And you'll be amazed at how often I get help when I ask that question, right? So this is, the, this is a simple strategy. I said to you, let's go make appointments. Let's go make appointments now, right? Are you interested in yes or no, right? If you've got, uh, you might have a little list over there of 50 or 100 email, send out 50 or 100 messages. Right, just blast it out. So you see what happens. Right, see what happens. Now, step two in this process, remember the call to action. Please reply yes or no. Right, yes or no. If somebody replies yes, you need to respond very quickly. Right. Best thing we can do is have a very quick chat. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Right. Here's my calendar link. Best thing you can do, let's have a quick chat. Right. Let's hop on a call very quickly. Here's my calendar link. Right, and then use something like Calendly, Schedule Once. Those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, appointment setting software, just Google that. Calendly is the easiest one, calendly.com. Time Trade, uh, Schedule Once. There's a million uh, 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 apps out there that can schedule appointments. Just pick one, right? I like Calendly, it's really easy, it's free. Uh, uh, you can use it very easy to make appointments, right? So if they say yes, great. Can we hop on? Can we just have a quick chat? I want to have a quick chat, right? Let's hop on and get a call, right? Now, you're either going to put a color link there to do the link. Me, if you really want to kind of make this work better, right, is what you want to do is 
not a Calendly link, but inside most scheduling software, it allows you to select a couple of times and you can copy and paste that directly into your email. It allows you to select a couple of times. Great. Can we hop on a call at 9 a.m. tomorrow or 11 o'clock? Just pick one of these two and it'll make the appointment straight away. So rather than going to a calendar link and have them go through and select all the dates that are available, you can actually give them two options, two or three options right up front. There's a fantastic app called appointment.to, appointment.to. It allows you to automatically build in uh, appointment links into your emails if you do this email. So appointment.to, uh, it allows you to put automatic, like it'll, it'll give you three days and you can say, I'm available here, 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 and they can literally just select the one that suits them best. So to, to really beef up the conversion rate, rather than just putting an appointment link, give suggested times. And I generally will give no more than three times. I, I like to go give two times. And if you don't hear back, say, hey, haven't heard, heard back. Uh, what about these two times? You're gonna ask again, right? What about these two times, right? Okay, so that's what you're gonna do in this strategy, yeah? Is, quick question, are you interested in getting better results of your Facebook advertising? Are you interested in getting qualified appointments booked, not just leads? Are you interested in getting qualified appointments booked? Yes or no, reply yes or no. Um, are you interested in never losing a sale, having total automation, automated follow-up? Are you interested in having automated follow-up to close or convert more sales? Just reply yes or no, right? Are you interested in running an email marketing campaign to, to boost your current month of sales? Yes or no? Are you interested in running an email marketing campaign to boost current month of sales? Yes or no, right? Are you interested in not dealing with tire kickers anymore? Are you interested in not dealing with tire kickers anymore? Yes or no? right? Are you sick and tired of a tie kicker? Yes or no, right? Are you losing deals that you should be closing? Are you interested in closing the deals that you're losing? Yes or no, right? That's if you're doing lead management, lead follow-up, uh, automation, pipeline. Hey, would you like, are you interested in getting your customers to make one extra purchase every time they come and buy? Yes or no? Upsell funnel, right? Sales automation, right? Hey, are you interested in tracking the buyers from your website? Yes or no? Are you interested in tracking the buyers from your website, right? Hey, are you interested in only marketing to people who are actually really interested in what you've got to sell? No one else. So imagine zeroing in that your marketing dollars will only focus on the people who want to buy and nobody else. That's, on, that's retargeting. If you're doing Facebook retargeting, that's the way to sell retargeting. Hey, imagine you can only market to people who are interested in buying and no one else. Are you interested in that? Yes or no? There's an offer, right? Yeah. So what I've done here is I've crafted a whole bunch of offers that you can use in this very quick strategy to go and get an appointment pretty much straight away, right? Very direct. Are you interested? Most people don't do this, right? So um, next uh, the short and punchy offer. Now, I've already given you the short and punchy offers, right? But sometimes if you know what the problem is and you can actually solve the problem, right, for people, then maybe you just talk about directly saying, hey, would you like me to solve this problem? Or would you like me to, I've got a thing that solves this problem, right? So here's how you would make this offer. So let's say I'm selling Facebook ads, right? So, um, uh, so problem, right? So, hey, uh, this is a reach out. Hey, here's a problem. Most people's Facebook ad campaigns suck. You might be experiencing this right now, right? But what if I actually showed you a framework and a proven pathway to actually maximize a conversion from Facebook? Can I share that with you, yes or no? Right? Most people, Facebook ads suck. Or have you ever found yourself saying that the leads you're getting on Facebook are terrible leads? If that's the case, right, what if I showed you a framework that actually turned those tire kickers into buyers? Would that be something useful to you? Yes or no, right? So you zero in directly on the problem, right? Hey, this is the problem. If I had a proven path and a framework that solved that problem and gave you this outcome, would that be useful to you? Would that be useful 
to you. Right? Those are, so think about, think about your whys. Why do people buy you or why do people hire you? Think about the problem that you're solving and just speak directly to that problem, right? So we're in the, one of our agencies I'm, I'm, uh, I'm in uh, as a partner in. Uh, our solution goes directly to the SaaS market. We're into uh, SaaS companies that specialize in the health uh, uh, tech market, in the health support market. So these are for clinicians, for hospitals, uh, you know, we work with software companies, right? There's two, there's three really big problems. Number one, not enough subscribers. Number two, uh, terrible conversion from demonstration to buyer. And number three, churn rate, the loss of customers, right? And so we know that these are the three problems. So when we talk to people, we sit there and say, listen, right now we've solved the subscription problem, subscription issue. We've got companies right now that used to have, uh, uh, we've seen, we've doubled people's subscription rates right, by getting zeroed in on a simple uh, strategy of uh, engaging an audience at the relevant time of buying. Are you interested in having a look at that? Would that be useful to you, yes or no? Right, making a direct offer. Here's the problem, right? Not enough subscribers. That's because the current marketing campaign or maybe the message doesn't work. So one of the fastest ways that we know how to turn that around is to be very direct uh, to the point of the buyer's journey. And uh, ultimately that dramatically improves your subscription rate. Would that be useful to you, yes or no? Right? right now, we know that most salespeople suck at converting sales. Do you have order takers or do you actually have people who help people invest in the software you've got right now? We notice by shifting the attention of our sales focus or sales process, we can maximize conversion. We can double conversions. Let me ask you, is doubling your conversions useful for you right now? So that's a 100% yes question, right? The response to that you're looking for is yes, right? Because what you're doing is you're speaking directly to the problem. Uh, so, for example, uh, I was uh, working with one of my uh, consulting champions and we were talking about they were targeting lawyers who only specialised uh, in companies that are funded startups. So very, very niche, niche uh, sort of thing. But the average investment is about 50 grand per client, right? And so the number one thing the lawyer wanted is I just need to talk to somebody who's funded, who needs our legal advice and help to make sure they've got the right structures in uh, uh, for their business, right? And then we become their counsel for the longevity of their business, right? So this was the question that he asked lawyers. Well, if I can put you in front of a startup founder who's fully funded or has at least between five and $20 million worth of funding, uh, would it be useful for you to talk to that person about the structures you've got to offer from your legal services? Just reply yes or no. 100% conversion rate to yes and it started with a conversation. So think about the problem, right? This is the problem, but if I could give you the direct answer, the direct outcome you're actually looking for in your words, yes or no, that is one of the easiest, punchiest ways to get through. I've done this many times. I've done this hundreds of times with our, uh, with our consulting champions, the people I'm coaching, and they've literally closed deals just by that messaging, right? We did it one time we were in New York. Uh, Nick, one of our guys, uh, was reluctant to put this message out. We had a direct message for Facebook advertising for uh, functional medicine doctors. They had a list that was dead. It was a dead list of 600 doctors. I said, let's make this direct offer and push it out to the market. He was very reluctant. He was talking to his business partner at the time saying, hey, John's recommending that we send this message. The business partner says, whoa, that's a bit full on. I don't think we should do that. But he didn't listen to his business partner. He listened to me and he pressed the send button. Two minutes later, there was a person on the phone asking to talk about the very thing that he made an offer for, right? And then I said, like, you know, we're, can you imagine we're in a live room, right? We made that direct offer and the person's on the phone. They're calling, like the, the mobile's buzzing, right? So they pick up the phone and the, the <laughs> Kyle, the guy who picked up the phone, put the guy on hold, looked at me in the front of the room as I was talking and said, hey, John, uh, the guy's just called me off the email we sent. Um, uh, is it okay if I step out and uh, help this guy, right? Like I'm going, are you crazy? Why are you even asking me the question? Get the hell out of the room and go and help the guy, right? So half an hour later, Kyle walks back in and closes a $30,000 deal with a deposit half an hour later on that message, right? Now, that's the exception to the rule. That's not going to happen to everybody, but I can tell you countless times where that has occurred by doing exactly what I've asked you to do here, right? So the key here is, what we focus on most becomes our reality. 
what we where our intention is and what we're committed to becomes what our intent what our outcome will be right so we've got to set ourselves up this is the jump shot this is the easy appointment setting jump shot that i've just set up for you right right talk to your familiar list talk to your lists talk to your social connections make the direct offer ask the question are you interested in i do you want help with this right can i teach you my favorite one of the best things you can do is teach people how it works right let me show you exactly how this works and at the end of that conversation here's what's going to happen based on what you talked about can you see how this works right now yeah absolutely so you've got a choice here you can either do this yourself or would you like our team to set it up for you what would you prefer to do what do you think we should do oh i think what's it going to look like for you to set it up that's the easiest sale you can make is teach people what you know right so many people don't do that but it's a fast way to generate revenue right so the next thing um we've got our friends and family let your friends and family know what you do right and let your friends and family know that you've got your appointment calendar and it's open that you're taking on a few people like right now and these are the sorts of people you're looking for let your friends and family know that your calendar is open right i cannot tell you how many people i talk to and i say do your friends and family know what you do and they go no i said do you think they know somebody <laughs> right okay so um I'm going to share one little strategy for you. Uh, this is the one that if you do this, it's a pretty much a slam dunk sale. It's a pretty much a slam dunk sale, right? So if you do this little thing, um, it's going to be uh, 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 pretty much a, a revenue generator, right? Um, I've talked about this a few times. Some people know this strategy, but all you want to do is you want to get sit down and just craft a list. This list is only people that you know, services that you buy from, people you've spoken to in the past, uh, connections, alumni, just write the list, right? Who do you know, right? I go to this restaurant, restaurant owner is Bob, right? I go to this chiropractor, my chiropractor is Tony. I go to this physical therapist, he's, this is Mary. I go to um, my accountant, uh, Sue's my accountant. So Sue's, my, Sue's the person I put now. Write down the names of business owners, right? So for people who are kind of just starting out, this is perfect for you. For, for freelancers, if you want a client uh, and you haven't discussed or discovered your niche yet, which is a big uh, question to people, this works for you. If you're in a niche and you need some extra work or clients, this I would do this too, right? This is money now, not later, right? Money now, not later, okay? So what you do is you have to stop undistracted. The only thing you've got in front of you is pen and paper. You just go crazy. Right? You might end up with 20 to 30 names of businesses or people you've spoken to in the past, 20 or 30, right? And so after you've spent about 45 minutes to an hour writing that list down, thinking through, pen to paper, this is a simple strategy, right? So you, all you're doing is like, who do I know? Who do I know? Just keep going. Even if you go back into your memory, who do I know, right? Write the list, create the list. What you're going to do is you're going to pick three people on that list, and you're going to look at this list and go, who, could, who do I feel I can talk to? Who do I feel I can really, really help? Right? That's the question you want to ask. Who do I feel that I can really, really help here? Right? So you pick three, only three, not all, just three. Right? And what you're going to do with these three people is think about how you're going to help them. Do a little bit of homework. Check out what's going on. Look at their digital footprint. Are they running some ads? Do they run a Facebook group? Are they, uh, do they have uh, 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 their own uh, community, right? Uh, you know, uh, are they collecting emails on their website? Uh, look at the SEO a little bit, do a little bit of a follow.net or a spyfu.net uh, and you can just check competition, keywords, advertising. Just have a, look, a little bit of a look at what's going on, right? Think about what you do and think about if they were to implement what you did for them, what would the impact be on their business? What do you think the impact would be, right? So what this speaks to is that you know roughly what a customer would spend with their business. You roughly know what a, you know how customers go about buying. Now, if you don't know the answer to these questions, uh, I often say to people, there is a website. It's very hidden. A lot of people never like it's one of those. It's one of these crazy websites that you just can't freaking find when you need it, right? So I'll just spell it out to you so you know, so you'll never forget this. There's this website, it's, it's spelled G double O G L E dot com, right? Most hidden website on the planet, G double O L G 
ae.com, google.com, right? So on that website, you can type in questions like, how much does the average customer spend on this product? Uh, for example, if I want to know how much money people spend to hire an architect, I just type in, how much does it cost to hire an architect? And then in Google, amazingly, it will come and say, well, the average architect will charge between $150 and $250 an hour. And if the building is a million dollars, then the architect's fee is $50,000. If the building is a $10 million building, the architect's fees are $500,000. So generally, it's 5% of the bill is the architectural fee. So now I know that if an architect generates a client or a building that's worth over $10 million, they're getting half a million dollars worth of cash for their design, for their work and their effort in putting that together. All because I went to the most hidden website on the planet that seems to know everything about everybody, Google. Right. So if you don't have the answers to some of these questions that I'm asking to get to know, just Google them. Right. What's the average, you know, what's the average sale for a plumber? What does a plumber charge normally for service? What does a plumber charge to fix pipes? What does a plumber charge to repipe a whole house? What does a plumber charge to do emergency plumbing? What does a plumber charge? Just Google it. What's the average client worth? Right. Um, uh, for that business. So, you know, so we pick three people. I'm just going to give you the go back through the instructions. So you're very clear. We've got a list of people that we've just sat down and we just put this bulk list together. We're going to choose three people. These three people, you feel like you can connect and reach out to them and have a conversation with. You feel like you, you are able to have that conversation. These are not people that you physically think, oh, well, that's going to be a hard conversation. You know, they're not going to talk to me. You have to pick three people that you feel like you can connect with, that you can actually have that conversation with, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to do a little bit of homework. You're going to look at and then think about what you do and think about if they were to apply your strategy in their business, what would the impact be for their business, right? So what I want you to do is devise a little plan for them, right? I've been thinking about your business and here's the email, here's the communication. Hey, I've been, you know, this is what I've been specializing in and this is what we do. I've been thinking about your business and I thought, you know what? I actually want to devise, I've devised a plan and a strategy that works on generating this impact or this outcome specifically for your business. Is it okay if we get together, have a quick chat and I can just share the plan with you? Can we do that, right? Really simple. So you've done your homework, you've mapped out what you would do to help them, right? You've got an idea of what's going on. How does what you do help this person, right? So you're tailoring the message to them and then Go and say, hey, look, I've, I've been, you know, this is what we do all the time. I've been thinking about all the people I know, and I've kind of been looking at businesses where we know we can make a really significant impact. And your type of business is a perfect business for the type of planning or the structure we put together to get this outcome. I'd love to show you what I've been working on. I mean, you can have this, but I just, for me, I was just thinking about you, and I think it would be a crime if you didn't see this, right? Notice my language. It would be a crime. It would be a damn shame with all the work that I've done that you wouldn't see the plan that I built for your business to create the impact on your business. It would be horrible. It would be a tragedy if you didn't see this plan, right? Okay. So, so you're going to, I know that's a little bit tongue cheek, but you're going to be a little bit personal on this idea, right? Now, here's what's going to happen. You're going to be chit-chat, right? The, far, the beginning of that conversation is a little bit of chit-chat. That chit-chat, how things going? What's going on? Are you drifting up? Are you stagnant? Are you going down? What's going on for your business right now? Okay, so you want to find out what's happening, right? Ask them, what do you think What do you think the most important things are in terms of you growing rather than hanging in there, if hanging in there was a the thing, right? Well, in our business, this is what we're focusing on, this is the thing. So, okay, great. So can I just show you how we can be on the drift up cycle, right? Um, something that I've worked on. I'd love to be able to walk you through it. I'd love to get your opinion on it. Would that be cool? And you just take, you know, this might be really helpful, useful. Would that be cool? They're going to go, absolutely, great. So now you have the opportunity to ask a few questions and now you can say, hey, let me walk through what I've put together. Now, here's your pitch at the end of it, right? What do you think about the idea? Do you think it's a good idea? Yes or no? Oh, it's a great idea, great. Do you think we should put this into place? Is this something you think we could do? Yeah, you've got a choice here. You can take this and try it yourself or would you? You'd be interested in having our team set this up for you. Yes or no? And they're going to go, if you do this to three people, two things are going to happen, right? One of the three people are probably going to go, you know what? That's a great idea. Let's give it a shot. I'll guarantee you you're going to make a sale if you do this, right? If you do this the way I've, I've shared with you. Or all three may say, yes, let's do this. But what you're going to do is if they're, if you're, if they're going to hire you, you have to offer a deal. You have to offer a deal. You have to do a deal. I'm not saying discount. 
you because they don't know what the price is, right? I'm saying position a deal for them, right? Offer a deal in doing that. So this is a really simple strategy. If you're, if you're scrapping for a fast sale, to me, this is one of the easiest things you can do is you can actually just craft this thing, think about that list, think about who you can reach out to, think about their business, let them know you've been thinking about their business, let them know that you've got this little gift, this little value that you've been uh, putting together that would be useful to them and say, hey, look, it'd be a crime if you didn't see it. Can we get? Can we hop on and have a quick chat about it? I'd love to show it to you, right? And they're probably going to say yes to you. They're more than likely 100% going to go, yeah, sure, let's do this, right? And then you're going to do the give. You're going to reach out and say, this is what I did. Now, you've got a choice. Hey, you can take this thing or would you like our team to, would you like to see what it's like for our team to implement this? Which would you prefer? In most cases, at least one of the three people you speak to are going to say yes, guaranteed. Sometimes all three might say yes. Right, depending on how you pitch or how you present your idea in relation to how it's a give for them, all three people, you'll pick up three clients just by doing that, right? Not hard to do, right? So, uh, past clients, right? People who work clients, if you have changed your offer in the last couple of months, if you've changed your offer, change what you're delivering, right? Go to those people and say, hey, would you like to see what I've been working on that's new? Hey, there's this new thing, right? People love new. People love new. So think about who you could go to that you've spoken to in the past or maybe you've worked with them and say, hey, how are you going? We've got something new, right? Can I show you what we've been working on, right? So go back to people. It's one of the easiest ways to go and get clients. The reason why... I love going back to people who I've worked with before is they will have a propensity to come and work with you again because there's a reason why they liked you in the first place, right? That doesn't mean, so understand these are people that you've served and for right now you're not serving, but now you've got another offer. So you can go back to people and make the re-offer. That's another option for you to go and make appointments right now, right? Um, the other thing is if you've pitched anything to anybody in the last 12 months, right? We're talking about making easy appointments. If you've pitched anything to anybody in the last 12 months, get that list together, right? Any offer, any presentation. I can see all of you writing notes down right now because you know what I'm talking about. Anybody you pitched to in the last 12 months, right? You're going to go back to those people and you're going to ask them, how's it going? Hey, we talked about this thing. Did you implement something? Did you put something in place? Did you have a chance to apply that? Are you still interested in something like that? You're going to ask them if they're still interested right? You're going to ask them if they did it, and you're going to ask them if they're still interested, right? How's it working for you right now, okay? So oftentimes, you will pick up appointments with people you've spoken to. Now, the reason why I say this is a good strategy is because a couple of reasons. One, they know who you are. They know what you deliver. They've, you've got a little bit of rapport with them. They know how much you charge, right? They've already got all the information in front of them. So now it's like, what about the result? What about the outcome? You can talk about the outcome, right? That's what I'll be doing. Yeah. Now, if you want, this is the last tactical thing that I would I would recommend. And to me, uh, whenever I've done this, in fact, I tried this strategy recently and, and it worked brilliantly um, because we made some pricing adjustments. What most people do is they tend to discount their pricing, right? I'm not a big fan of discounting. I'm a really big fan of putting prices up, right? I'm a really big fan of putting prices up. I'm also a really big fan of adding value to increase the price, adding value to increase the price. So here's what I would do. There's two sides of this coin, right? One, I would use a price increase to incentivize the sale now. So what I would do is I would send out a message and say, hey, we're about to increase the investment in our services, right? So, and you might do a significant increase. You might do a 30% price hike, right? So you might be charging three grand, now you're gonna be charging $4,200, right? So you're gonna add another 1200 bucks a month to the service. If you're interested in locking in the current price, right, locking in before the end of the month, just let me know now. Hey, we're about to increase our investment because we're getting amazing results for our clients, right? Uh, we thought we'd just share this with you first. We're not releasing this to everybody, but if you're interested and you wanna lock us in now, right? 
we will keep this price for you. And if you want to keep this price and it's not right now, but you want to do it in the future, just let me know now. We can arrange for a small installment or a deposit and lock that price in for you next month or the month after. Are you interested? We're using the price increase to lock in the current price deal now. So we're not discounting, we're putting the price up. After this date, we're more expensive. Before this date, you've got an option to lock in the price. You can use the lock in the price strategy, right? Fear of missing out. Yeah, that's a fear, that's, that's a fear of missing out strategy, right? But so what most people do is they, they do the discount thing. Don't do the discount thing, right? Because all that is is a race to the bottom. And eventually what happens is if a client buys you because of the discount, because of the, 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 the fact that you're dropping price, the value proposition is not there, right? It, it completely goes out the window. So use a price. It's counterproductive, right? Counterintuitive. Use a price increase to lock the current price, right? Lock the current price. The part B of this strategy, the part B of this strategy, right, is to actually add some value as a deal, right, over and above the current price range. So a perfect example of this might be, uh, let's say we'll actually craft or we'll do the creative and the design. We're going to give you $2,000 worth of creative design towards your campaign offer landing page, right? Normally we charge our clients for a setup for your $5,000, right? We'll give you two grand to strategy, creative and design for the landing page for the campaign. Most people don't charge a setup fee, right? Oftentimes, uh, if you charge a setup fee for your services, if you don't, sorry, if you don't charge a setup fee, separate from your monthly fee, if you don't charge a setup fee, just type in one in the, in the, in the chat here. Just type in one in the chat. If you don't charge a setup fee, just type in one. Yep. Anybody who doesn't charge a setup fee, now you do, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ivan doesn't charge a setup fee. Now you do. Because here's what you do. You say, hey, normally we charge as an investment for our strategy and setup for the process. If you decide to buy now, we will eat the we will give you that money. And then what you do on your invoices, you actually put it as a line item on your invoice. So you tell the client that, hey, it's normally five thousand dollars for the setup fee. And then you strike a line for it, and then you put that in the invoice. So the client sees that you actually charge for strategy and setup. So they see the discount. They see the saving, right? If you're not charging right now, then why don't you give it as a price point to your client? Hey, normally we have an investment of $5,000 to do the setup. If you decide to work with us, we will cover the cost of that. We will pay for your five grand, right? So then when, you, when they agree, you're gonna have invoice. If it's three grand a month or five grand a month, it's gonna have $5,000 strategy and setup fee, five grand. Strike the line. Monthly service fee, $5,000 to start, right? $10,000 minus five, five grand. Show it in your invoice, right? If you're not charging for setup, you should be charging for setup. It's ridiculous not to charge for setup because here's the thing. You don't, if you don't value your thinking time, your strategy. So I'll give an example of this. Uh, to run, if you want to run a successful face uh, dialed in Facebook campaign, you, you're not just going to go and set up the copy, set the creative, set and forget, throw the budget, go and run and pray how merry that your targeting and everything is right, that you're going to get the best uh, cost per acquisition, right? Uh, that doesn't happen. When you set up an ad campaign in Facebook, you're thinking about you've got to have a converting offer. So the first thing you're going to strategize on, strategize on is, do we have a great converting offer, right? What's the creative? What's the copy? What's the image design that's going to attract the clicks and the attention, right? What's the call to action? Then we're going to optimize that campaign. Then we're going to probably maybe create five or six or 10 uh, ad sets for that campaign to test which campaign is going to work best and get the best results. If you are not running Facebook ads like this, you are screwing your clients, right? But this is how to run a Facebook ad campaign that's going to crush it. Because you're, you're, what you're doing is you're focusing on strategy first, right? Well, that takes time. That's your time. And most people just give that away for free. They don't value that, right? But that's but if I, if like, say, for example, um, uh, back in the day, I worked for one of the behemoths of the world. I worked for the largest consulting firm in the world, 
right? And if we had a strategy conversation, you and I, I as an associate for my company, you as a client, the bill would be $2,000 an hour. Now, I wouldn't be paid $2,000 an hour for my time. No, no, I got a small portion of that. But the company I work for would be paid two grand an hour just for strategy. So if we spoke for five hours, we had five hours of interaction about ideas and thinking, you got a bill for 10 grand, right? For thinking. And companies had no problem paying for strategy. A lot of people pay for strategy, right? So if you're not charging for your thinking, then let people know that they're actually getting thinking for free at a value. Use the price. So what can you add value with to make a direct offer? If you're not charging a setup fee, start charging one in your invoice and say, hey, if you do this now, you'll, what we do is we get our team together. We have a creative team, a copy team, and, a, and a, an implementation team. We're going to get our heads together. Normally, we charge our clients three to $5,000 to devise that strategy. I am happy to eat the cost on that if you decide to use us, if you decide to go ahead, right? So use that as your offer, as your hook in the market, okay? So I just want to recap uh, a couple of things, right? Number one, if I go back to the beginning of what I started with here, when we're talking about appointments, right? Um, what you focus on most becomes your reality. If you think that just going getting leads and connecting with 25 people a day, that's going to make your appointments, that's not going to make your appointments. The only thing that's going to make an appointment is you actually making the appointment, focusing on the things that you know you should be doing, right? Um, uh, distractions, right? Building the routine, getting focused on the activity in and of itself. So no distractions, no drama, no lack of focus. You know what you're doing, right? Uh, you want to get organized. You don't want it to get organized. You just want to get focused and done committed, right? Um, you don't want to make more contacts and leads, right? You just need to say, hey, I'm going to make two appointments today. I'm going to make one appointment today. I'm going to make three appointments today. I'm committed to doing this thing, right? Okay. What we focus on most becomes real to us, right? So uh, we want to build a process, right? Remember, go for the jump shot first. Low hanging fruit, easy appointments. People you know, people you've connected with, people you communicated with, the list, right? A couple of strategies that we talked about, right? Uh, using the familiar, using the uh, that call to action, which is really simple. Are you interested in, right? Quick question. All of that to go and get an appointment, right? Highly encourage you to go out there and generate or do these things uh, uh, for generating appointments. Tomorrow, I'm going to talk about things like uh, automating the process. I'm going to talk about the psychology of the conversation that you're going to have that assumes that the person wants to sit down and have that conversation with you. Uh, the confidence piece, which is really key in the appointment setting. So owning uh, what you do as a value proposition to allow a customer to go, I need to talk to you. You're a smart cookie. I need you, right? We want to get into that type of uh, uh, cadence in what we do. Now, for some people uh, who need a little bit more clarity, right? Um, something that I'm doing, this isn't for everybody, by the way. This is only for people who kind of want to do, get those appointments, get the, get the things booked, uh, build a structure. Um, so what I thought I'd do, and I'm only going to uh, offer this to a few people. There's nothing to buy. You don't have to buy this thing. But one thing I do know that if you're going to get focused and structured is you want to know, you want to dial in exactly what you've got to do, right? So what I did was I've actually built a really simple model and a framework. Work. It's called a client acquisition plan, right? Um, if you want to, I'm happy to go through the client acquisition plan with you. Uh, if you go to calljohnloger.com, so if you go to calljohnloger, C A L L, I'll just put it in the chat here for those of you. If you go to go to calljohnloger.com, right? Um, this will book you in for some time with me personally, but the only thing that we're going to be talking about is an actual client acquisition plan, right? The actual client acquisition plan. So if you're interested and you want to book some time and there's only a few slots available, I'm not going to open this up to everybody, but if you want my help to get you really zeroed in and dialed in, just go to calljohnlogar.com, right? Um, in fact, I'll just throw up a slide so you can just see, uh, uh, you should be able to see this on your screen. No, you're not going to be able to see this on your screen. Hang on, let me just get that. 
Uh, I'm not sure if you can see that on the screen. You should be able to see. No, that's not working for me. So you'll notice there's a little link. It's called calljohnlogo.com. Book a time with me. I'll walk you through a simple client acquisition plan, right? A structure. Um, the idea is to execute, go out there, get appointments for yourself, right? So if you want some time with me just to do that thing, book that time. But only if you're going to actually want to get appointments and make the sales, right? Don't book it in if you just want to have a chit chat with me, right? If you want to go and apply and implement, please book and apply and implement. We're going to do the application and the implementation. That's the key, right? So if you go to calljohnlogar.com, uh, C-A-L-L johnlogar.com, I'll put it, in, I'll put it it's actually in the chat for those who are here. So your booking is time. This is a really simple framework. It's called a client acquisition plan, a structure. Um, and the whole thing is to make sure that you're acquiring, buying customers in that process. So if you go there now, you can grab some time. If you go to calljohnlogo.com, it'll take you there. There's only one thing you can do. There's nothing for you to buy. Just grab that piece in there. Um, and then I can walk you through that process and give you some clarity, some focus, uh, and a better structure for you to go out there and knock it out of the park. Um, love to know your biggest takeaway. For those who have been here, if you've got a question, I'm happy to hang for a, a few minutes, but if you've got a question, you can ask me a question. If you haven't got a question and you've picked up and looked at your notes, what's the biggest takeaway that you've had from this session? What's been the most th the thing that's been the most uh, useful to you? If you can just type it in the chat, I'm happy to read it out, uh, just so others can sort of pick up on uh, what the focuses are. Um, what's been the number one thing you've picked up out of today? Uh, super valuable information as always, take away, create the routine that aims at the outcome, not the tasks. Yes, absolutely, right? Eliminate focusing on all the other things other than just making an appointment. What else? If you can, if those of you are willing to share, uh, laptop, uh, Ivan, Johnny, good to see you here. Brandon, uh, for those of you who haven't already, just go to calljohnlogo.com if you want the client acquisition plan. Uh, best actionable strategy, thanks mate. Appreciate it. Are you asking me a question, Miles, or are you making a statement? <laughs> are you asking me what the best acquisition actual strategy is, or you know what these strategies? Keep it simple. Focus on the problem your clients are having. Statement. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, other takeaways. Happy to accept any other takeaways you've had. Bill Dyer. Good to see you here. Chris Lacey, as always. Brandon Foster, as always. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it, Miles. So if you haven't done it already, go and grab some time on my calendar. If you want the client acquisition plan with me, uh, then just go to calljohnlogar.com. That'll give you some time in my calendar. I can walk you through some really clear steps. Make sure that you're on the track to getting those clients. Uh, uh, Howard says, focus on the outcome, outcomes. Monique says, thanks. Figure out how many people we need to speak to before we get a client. Absolutely. That's a good one. Uh, Try to schedule. It says having issues with... Cloudflare, uh, Xavier, uh, should be fine. If it's not, I'll just I'll I'll check check back in about five or ten minutes. I'll make sure that that's uh, working correctly. It shouldn't be having any issues with Cloudflare because it's not attached to Cloudflare. So hmm, interesting, um, but uh, I'll fix that. So uh, uh, any other questions? If you've got a question, I'm happy to answer the question. If you want me to help you out here, uh, Ivan, Johnny, Howard, Brandon, Chris, Laptop, Xavier, Bill. If you've got a direct question, I'm happy to answer your question. Otherwise, I'm going to say thanks. Uh, the appointment system, appointment.to. Yes, appointment.to. Xavier, ask a question, mate. Unmute or type the question in the chat and I'll answer your question. If you want to unmute, unmute. Yes, yeah, so... How's it going, boss? Glad I connected with you, man. I just found out about you doing some searching in another group. I must <laughs> say that you are the most accurate. I mean, you just flow with knowledge and wisdom, man. So I, I, I appreciate you and I appreciate being on here, um, being able to ask you a question directly. You were in a different group before. I don't know if I should say the name or want to say the name, but I, I was very interested in how you laid out how you would package the SaaS product that I am yep. currently um, getting familiar with. So you're, 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 if I can remember, you're talking about Go High Level. Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. All right. So Go High Level is a great uh, CRM. Uh, um, for me, uh, the number one thing that I know is people don't manage their lead. There's, there's, two, there's two really cool things that Go High Level does, right? Uh, these are probably the things that have the greatest impact on a business. 
Uh, and by the way, those who don't know what Go High Level is, it's a CRM uh, lead management tool, landing pages. It's kind of membership pages. It's got a whole bunch of functionality, not unlike ClickFunnels, but perhaps a little bit more uh, devoted to the CRM sales side. But one of the key functionalities that I think are very valuable is, uh, is the ability to manage a lead in real time and to be able to communicate in multiple modalities with clients. So you can email, messenger, text, voice drop, or you can do a forced call to a salesperson with a pre, pre record to say, hey, would you like to speak to somebody? Let me connect with Bob. And then Bob gets a phone call and says, hey, we've got somebody on the line. Would you like to accept the call? So there's some really cool functionality or functional features of that SaaS. The thing that that product, uh, Xavier, does really well is that you can manage a opportunity in real time. What most businesses have a problem with is that they don't manage the leads at all. They don't contact them, they don't follow through. And if they do manage to engage the lead, it happens a day or two or five days later and the lead's dead and cold. So the number one problem that people have is they don't effectively, like they're not really either qualifying or effectively managing the lead in real time. So the cool thing about Go High Level is two things. One, if we were able to manage a lead in real time, provide the, uh, the actual steps that the client can get exactly the help that they need to buy your product or service, would that be useful to you? Would that be a better process than what you're experiencing right now? Because the problem right now with leads is we don't know the quality of the lead. We don't know, we don't know what the lead wants, right? Uh, unless we can attribute it to an offer. Um, and uh, we don't even know if they're ready to buy now. Like we don't know the intent. We just know that they're interested in something, right? Whereas if you can manage the lead in real time, you can educate, let the person know exactly what the next steps are or what can happen. Uh, and you can, and the client feels like you've had, they've been responded to in real time. So the cool thing about that software, Xavier, is that you're able to manage an opportunity in, in, in the immediate time frame of when they make an inquiry. Whereas most people aren't able to do that. They don't, they don't have a process. They have a broken sales process. That's why they fail, right? So if I was selling, as, selling it as a SaaS, to me, the benefit is managing leads in real time and converting sales faster, right? Booking appointments and converting sales faster in real time and being able to forecast, right? And also manage uh, projected budgets or revenue in sales. Those are the cool things about Go High Level, right? So uh, that my approach would be, right now, do you find yourself saying that the leads you get suck, they just don't buy, right? Can we turn all those leads into buyers or can we actually maximize the opportunity to get those leads and become make them turn into buyers? Or can I, um, what if we're able to automate the follow-up process so that you never minimize or lose the chance to convert sales? So you never forget an opportunity. You're going to make sure every single deal is followed through effectively. Are those the things that would be useful to your business? That's how I would pitch that software um, uh, as a tool. The challenge that you've got, Xavier, and I don't want to get into this, is you need to know your stuff, right? You need to know how this is going to work for a particular business that you're going to offer this to. You need to know what their sales cycle is. You need to know what their buying process is. You need to know what their current systems and strategies are, right? You've got to find out how, what's going on right now. So the easiest thing to do with the service you've got, Xavier, is I'd just be talking to people who are running ads. I wouldn't be talking to people who don't run ads, right? So anybody that's running a Facebook ad campaign needs that service. Anybody that's running an AdWords campaign needs that service because they will tell you that they get very mixed results in their campaigns. They already get mixed results in the campaigns. So would it be get it better that we can actually quantify, measure, uh, actually uh, improve our ability to convert sales? Would that be a better option, right? So, so my recommendation, um, say, listen, what if we turned all those tie kicker leads that you can't close into sales? There's an offer. Are you interested in having a look at how that system works? Yes or no? That's my offer, Xavier. That's what I'll be looking at, right? Uh, right now, do you feel like you're losing? Do you feel like you're missing out on follow-ups? Do you feel, feel like that you're, uh, that you're dropping the ball, right? Because how much is dropping the ball costing you in your business right now, right? Uh, do you know what your conversion rates are right now? If we could double your conversion rate purely by measuring and giving you direct feedback exactly where the sales process is, would that be useful to your business, Xavier? 
These are all offers that I would make out to the market that are relevant to the market. But the more I know about the business that I'm making that offer to Xavier, the more I can choose, the more I can fine tune or customize that actual communication. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So, so my, my, yeah. my thing is I am just starting out. I am also, yeah. I am also still figuring out my niche and all of that stuff. I, I have a great story and I have a great way that I plan to leverage it. I do have some yeah. local business success. So I'd like to talk to you about really dialing in. Um, I, I did try to book just now. I don't know. I'm not sure if it went through. It looks like it might be a, a, a error on ClickFunnels level because it's showing me the actual Click ClickFunnels page um, that it took it? me to. Yes, yeah, it actually took me to a page that has ClickFunnels logo and then it says subscribe. Uh, I've, to got, I've got you in here, man. You're booked. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So yeah, so then I guess, I, I, I guess um, I know you only want to talk about, I'm, but listen, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go wherever you say go, do whatever you say do. So you point me to the water and I'm a drink, man. I, I'd rather have that kind of discussion with you. Just, just, yeah, you, you, mate, you can have a discussion with me at that level. That's fine. Um, but the key thing, what I will say is forget about the niche, right? Forget about the niche. What you want to do is you want to talk to businesses because yep. the niche might find you, Xavier, rather than you. Because if you sit there thinking about, oh, I've got to get the niche, that's, that's the most common question. So I'm really glad you're asking these questions, Xavier, because this is a question I get a lot, right? Like I had somebody, uh, in fact, uh, last week, somebody asked me a very direct question. They said, John, I'm talking to you, like me, right? If you, what is the best niche right now? The one that's got the most money that will yeah. spend money on this thing that I've got to offer. What, which niche would you go after, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so my response to that question, well, first of all, I said, if I gave you a niche and you didn't know anything about that market, that would be a disservice. It means you're going to go away, do a whole bunch of homework, a whole bunch of learning, a whole bunch of things for you to find out. Uh, and before you make a sale, it's going to be six, six weeks to two months down the track. So my question is, do you want to make a sale now or in two months, right? right. And he said, right. I want to make a sale now, right? I said, great. So let's start with what you do know, right? Let's start with businesses that perhaps you can have a conversation with. Let's start, like, so keep it, so if I was looking at go high level, I would be looking at the most simplest solution that go high level helps with. And that, what that simple solution might be add into go high level, into firing off an email, into firing off a text message, and that's it right? Uh, um, uh, or a simple four-step sequence. Uh, here's the next step to help you get what you're looking for. Here's how you get in touch or get, book an appointment on calendar. Uh, here are the frequently asked questions. Here's a case study of a couple of clients that have achieved results or love our product or service. Uh, by the way, here's where you book in or one of our people are going to call you. That's a simple sequence that you can set up automatically for any business and say, hey, what if we could manage the lead in real time? Time, and what if we could actually provide the relevant information in real time and then open the door to getting more appointments, more sales from all the money that you spend on your advertising? Would that be useful, Xavier? Absolutely. That's an offer. That's the offer I want you to make, right? Brilliant. So don't worry about the niche. Go and talk to a business owner and say, hey, how are you running ads, right? Yeah, I'm running ads. Great. Uh, do you add suck? Do the leads suck that you get? They're getting uh, questionable quality. Yeah, we get a lot of rubbish. And stuff. How do you manage them right now? Well, you know, we contact them in, in a day's time, two days time. When you contact them in a day or two days time, what is that like? Well, they forget about us. They're not interested. They don't even know why we're calling. Uh, let me ask you a question. If we were able to engage that lead at the time of contact immediately, provide them with real information and help them to take the next step, where you didn't have to rely on somebody to pick up the phone and call them, what do you think would happen if that ha if we were able to do that? Their response is going to be, well, it'd be freaking awesome, right? So what if we did a test? What if we actually did that for you? I could set up a system, manage the lead in real time, provide the real information, uh, look at the call to action, right? And have that customer followed up immediately exactly when they made the inquiry. And then your sales team can be prompted to actually contact that customer because they've already been told exactly what's going to happen next. Would that be useful to you, Xavier? Brilliant. That's the pitch, right? Yep. Forget about all the bells and whistles. Forget about all the bells and whistles. Just pick something simple. Set it up as a test. What you want to do is go and get to that first client, right? How much charge whatever you want to charge, right? Okay. Charge, doesn't matter what you charge. 
all you've got to do is you've got to get to that experience of somebody going, that's a great idea. And they're going to ask you how, how much to set that up. And you can say, well, you know, this is what I normally charge to set it up. Right. But for you, I can do a deal. Yeah. Right. Get three or four clients like that, Xavier. That gives you a base. Then you can put your prices up. That's going to give you a better feeling for how things work because you're working in real time. Right. Then you can put your prices up. Then you can start targeting your clients and maybe one of the clients by then within about a 30 day period, you're starting to see is like, wow, you know, we've booked like 15 appointments uh, in this and all those 15 appointments, five sales were made, five sales were made. They made like 20, 30 grand. Great. Then you look at that business and you go, how many other businesses are like this? Right. Hey, would you like to see how we completely automated the sales process, picked up an extra 30 grand with the sales without doing any effort? Would that be something useful? And then you can start to scale from there, right? Does that make sense? Perfect sense. Awesome. All right. So I look forward to our convo, man. Likewise. That makes two of us, John. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Um, Howard Tiana, you've got a question, my friend. Let me answer the question for you. <clears throat> okay. Well, um, like Xavier, I am working on a go high level offer. And yep. I was considering using a Google My Business front end. Uh, foot in the door uh, because it doesn't really need any explanation. Everybody knows what it is. They know the value of it. And um, <clears throat> as the, as the calls come in, then I could be, you know, my upsell is the Google is the go high level. Uh, my concern is you're not going to get enough volume at the beginning so that the go high level thing is not going to be as uh, effective. You know, if they're only getting one or two calls a day, they're, Probably their internal staff can handle that. So I'm um, thinking now maybe that's not the best approach. Maybe, um, you know, I should be looking at who's advertising and then yeah. approaching it's those good. folks. If you can, like, I think uh, if you spyfoo.net or follow, follow.net, spyfoo.net or follow.net, you can put in, you can go to businesses that are running ads and then dump their URL into spyfoo and that'll give you their ad spend, that'll give you their keywords, that'll give you their, they'll just give you an idea of what they're roughly doing, what the offer is, right? Uh, then you can go and direct to the market and say, hey, look, I've seen your offer, I've seen what's going on. Love to, you know, my big thing is, is I know that most people think that their leads suck. I'm not sure if you're experiencing the same thing, but one of the reasons why uh, lead generation is ineffective in this level is because of the speed of management. And right now, customers, when they're inquiring, they need uh, an action point. So if we're able to engage the customer in real time and maximize the opportunity to get more appointments or maximize the opportunity for them to buy, would that be something useful to you? Is it worthwhile sitting down? Because I know that for every lead that you don't close, is an it's an opportunity of cost that you lose in the business. So if I can show you how you can actually make sure every single lead is followed up and addressed in a way so that you dramatically improve your conversions or dramatically improve your sales, would that be useful to you, Howard? So yeah. I could pick I could pick companies from their ads. Like I could just go Google type of business location and there's a company. I could literally go, okay, there's five or ten of those guys, dump them in a spy food and say, hey, I noticed you're running this offer. I know I followed the offer through. I'm wondering right now, are you happy? Like right now, I would imagine you're probably frustrated with the leads that you're not closing or the leads aren't really that great, right? And I know why. So if I can fix that for you, is that something that might be useful or helpful, Howard? Yeah. I don't yeah. even have to talk about follow-up or automation or anything. I'll say, listen, this is a big problem. The reason why people burn leads is because of an ineffective sales process. And I don't know if you've experienced, but I know you're probably frustrated. You're running ads and you get so many leads and only a certain number of those actually turn into customers. But my question is, I know you're leaving a ton on the table. Is it worth sitting down having a conversation how you can close the gap? And the ton that you're leaving is the ton you close. I've got a method that will the, the bang for dollar is going to crush your conversion rates. Can we have a quick chat? Yes or no? I could make that offer all day long. So you so you suggest cold calling or a cold email? No, no, no. Send them, send them the information and just follow up and say, look, I shot this through. Not sure it's relevant. Are you interested or not? Right? They'll go, give me more information, right? Well, great. Uh, if you, you know, Give me five minutes and I can answer your questions, right? If you want, I'll demonstrate it to you. I'll, let's demo it, right? And then you can go into demo, yeah? Yeah, you know, it was, it's been right. suggested to me that 
I should have like a like a page set up, landing page where you know it has case studies or testimonials. Yeah, you, you can do that, but you don't need it, man. If you want to pick up some fast clients, don't worry about the landing page or the sales page, <laughs> right? Like your website is unimportant, right? If we want to get deals now, if you want to just like let's just hustle it. Right? Just say, listen, this is what I'm going to talk to you about. It's going to be 10 minutes or 15 minutes of your life. You can decide whether or not you want to continue on. I'll give you all the pages you want after that. Let's have that first conversation first. So you're saying right. shoot an email, shoot an email, and then follow up. Shoot on. an email and let them know that you're, going to, that you're going to touch base. Hey, saw your ad. Not sure if they're working for you. I'm not interested in your advertising. I'm more interested in closing the deals. Right? Can I come and talk to you about closing deals? Yes or no? Right now, it's pragmatic. It's pragmatic. Yeah. Yeah. Another approach or another strategy that I've used very successfully is I've just say, hey, I'm partnering with companies who are struggling with conversions. Uh, and my whole goal was to dramatically improve the conversion rate of sales. Are you interested? Yes or no? And they go, well, what's it all about? Right. Starts the conversation. Right. It's not hard to get an appointment when you, when you zero in to the thing that they're interested in. Right. But to me, if I'm telling you, hey, I had a look, I'm noticing this, not sure if it's happening to you, but it must suck if it does. And if it does, it'd be worthwhile just us having a chat. I'll reach out to you in a couple of days time just to quickly say hi and see if this is something that might be useful to you. Okay? And you let them know you're coming, hmm. right? Then the, then the call's not hard, right? Mary picks up the phone. It's really simple. Hey, Mary, it's Howard here. Uh, Josh knows that I'm going to be giving a call. Just let him know that Howard's on hold. Uh, and thank you very much for putting me through. That's it. And Mary's just going to go, ah, 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 okay, dunk, put you through. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. And then you're going to go, yeah. hey, Howard, you don't know me from Buckus, but I shot you an email the other day. This is what the email's about. Give me 60 seconds. You can let me know whether or not we should continue the conversation. Fair enough? Yeah. And he's going to go, yep, great. Yeah. This is what it's about. You're interested? You're not interested? Right? Best way to do that is to demonstrate and show you how that works. Are you cool? Can we make a time? I've got uh, four o'clock this afternoon or uh, nine o'clock tomorrow morning. Which time suits you best? Which, when well, can before, I pencil you Before you, you get to that, you've got to give them, yeah. you gotta give them the 60 second pitch. Yeah, the 60 second pitch is this is what I found and this is what's going on. Is this something that'd be useful? Can we continue on? Do you want to know more? Yes? Yeah, I do. Right, great. Well, this is how we help people out. Best thing we can do is hop on a proper call where I can demo it for you. I've got a couple of questions to help you out. At the end of that, you can decide whether or not this is something that might be worthwhile or useful to the company. The conversation alone is going to show or demonstrate to you thousands or tens of thousands of worth of revenue that you're leaving on the table right now. I would imagine that that would be a very fair, useful conversation to have. Like if I can show you the money and show you the impact and show you the outcome, I would imagine it'd be worthwhile at least having a chat about it. Yes or no? Yeah. Yeah. And how, I don't and think what, there's a single person on the planet will go, no, right? And how yeah. would you price Now, if the guy says, send me the info, I'll send you an email, let me pencil it in, let me pencil the appointment in, I'll send you the information, right? But ultimately, this is what I'm going to share with you. I would imagine it would be important to maximize every dollar you invest in your marketing that you want to return on investment. Would that be fair? Yeah. And at the end of the day, you're looking at the budgets and the targets and the figures and the sales, Yeah. And you want to see a drift up in that in those revenue options. You want to be doing either better or more than what you're doing right now. Would that be fair? Yeah. So, so do you okay, send them yeah. an in, in, indoctrination sequence, or you can? Or you can I don't want to. I want to one email confirming the appointment. Hey, this is who I am. This is what we do. This is the result we help you with. Uh, let's go. <laughs> you don't need to go. You don't need to like all the indoctrination sequences, all that sort of stuff, Howard. In the time that we've known each other, you should have already built that out. You could have built that out 50 times already, right? So forget about indoctrination, dude. Let's just do the thing, make the appointment. It's pretty simple, right? I know and this is a mindset thing, Howard, and there's got to be a, a bit of a swagger about you, right? You're, you, you, know, you, mate, you have got everything, Howard. I'm speaking to you. My eyes are, I'm looking at you, boy, right? I'm looking at you, dude, right? I'm speaking to you right? You've got, you know how to do this. You know that it works. Yeah. You know that if you were to sit down with somebody, map this out, you know that you can make the impact. You already have that in you, right? So all we've got to do is have that conversation. So dude, this is a common problem. Are you experiencing anything like this? Yeah. What is it? Have you ever figured out or you ever thought about what it's costing you? Not getting it right. 
Because when I've sat down and done the numbers, it can turn into a catastrophe, right? Now, I would imagine that you would rather that client or those customers to invest the money in the product or service that you've made an offer for with you rather than going to a competitor. Would that be fair? And they would go, yeah, well, great. So it wouldn't be worthwhile sitting down looking at exactly how to make sure that that happens, that you minimize the risk of the loss. Because ultimately what happened, what I'm finding right now is when people run ads, they're running ads to advertise other people's businesses, not their own business. They go, what do you mean? I'm advertising for my business. Yes, you are. But if you don't engage the lead in real time, you're sending that lead to your competitor because they were interested in your product or service. And if you didn't respond and they're interested, they're going to go looking somewhere else. Swipe right, welcome to Tinder of business right? That's what, that's the reality, right? So uh, you want to optimize and you want to maximize every opportunity. If you can use automation, if you can use direct messaging, if you can have that type of conversation that gives that client every opportunity to get what they were looking for. And that means to look at buying your product as opposed to competitors. I would imagine you would want to do something like that. Yes or no? Yeah. 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 So notice how I'm now I don't even, I mean, I know your product, I don't even know who I'm talking to, but that would be exactly what I would say to somebody who I want to help, right? Hey, my goal was to help you with that outcome. That's what we do, right? Your goal is to be really good at what you do, right? But if we can sit together and improve that outcome, then my question to you, is it worth improving an outcome? Yes or no? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And every time that's going to be a yes. Conviction, confidence, understanding yeah got you okay yeah that's helpful. does that help yeah that's helpful yeah. thanks man all right i don't know what a e n john is laptop whoever laptop is but uh a oh amen thanks man <laughs> amen amen uh thanks thanks uh laptop <laughs> i appreciate it uh it's funny that uh with your name uh, Rajesh, good to have you here. Brandon, Ivan, uh, have you got any questions, man? Can I help you directly with something? I know you're standing looking at me. If there's anything I can answer for you, uh, guide you with, give you some focus or structure, let me do that while I'm here so you can rock and roll. If you got your microphone there, I can't hear your microphone there. Yeah, I'm not, you got you. Uh, I'm not at the moment, mate. Um... I think you've given us a bucket load of um, strategies that we can pretty much implement like the moment we get off this call, man. So um, no, thank you very much. I'm sure I'll have some um, questions ready to rock for you in uh, tomorrow's session, but yeah, thank you so much for today, man. It's been awesome. I appreciate it, man. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed it. Um, uh, I know that you've been on a few of these calls with me uh, and uh, uh, yeah, look, uh, you know, uh, at the end of the day, um, I think the biggest thing, the challenge that we have uh, as business owners is it's not so much the focus thing, but it's the distraction thing. You know, a lot of times we tend to, tend to get distracted. Um, and I think, I know this is one of the big things a lot of people tend to struggle with uh, because they're, they're, they're thinking around the issue rather than on the issue, you know. And when you start thinking about creatively about the thing itself, uh, it kind of changes the perspective, uh, you know, it gets a little bit more pragmatic, but, um, uh, uh, but I appreciate your comments, man. I, I thank you for, for hanging out with me too, mate. Really appreciate it. Yeah, cool. Uh, Brandon says, I've uh, gotten clarity on what I need to do. Going to reach out to some past connections tonight. Awesome, Brandon. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Miles, please ask your question, mate. Feel free. Unmute. Hey, John, I appreciate the, tonight, uh, again, your wisdom and everything precedes you. Just a quick question, during, the, during this pandemic, what has been any positive trends out of LinkedIn? More, are more people on there than ever before? Oh, man. Okay, so I'm really glad that you asked this question because, you know, the online space has kind of blown up, right? What, what, what a lot of brick-and-mortar businesses have found is they've found where they've got a lot of gaps, right? The biggest problem a lot of businesses have is they realize they haven't been very good at managing their clients. They haven't been really good at managing uh, their client information. Uh, they haven't been very good at uh, um, uh, their visibility and their branding and their messaging. I'm speaking to brick and mortar businesses that are, tend to be in that small to medium range, bigger companies, 
um, and the other part of this is what, what happened just from a, a, a business perspective, a lot of companies um, uh, had uh, the situation where they relied heavily upon referrals, but they didn't actually, they weren't very proactive in the acquisition of leads. That's probably the biggest uh, issue. And right now, referrals have gone out the window. And yesterday, I got my hands on McKinsey, uh, uh, McKinsey and Co's uh, uh, risk assessment on the current situation with COVID. Um, and I was I was actually blown away that uh, they they in their assessment, 66 66 percent of small businesses uh, are out. But get this, 2020, 2.1 million businesses were registered in 2020. So 2.1 million new businesses were registered last year, right? That's huge. That's just in the United States alone, let alone what's happening in Australia, what's happening in other, other parts of the world. I think mm. the biggest problem, the biggest challenge that most people face is they realize that they've made a mistake in not getting their online uh, branding and messaging correct. And they realize their mistake of not managing their customer uh, information and contacts. And I think that's because all of a sudden now it's like, what do I do? How do I fix this problem? That's the question that comes up. So in our world, anything digital is going to be a benefit, right? If you're in social media, it is gangbusters. If you're a content creator right now, gangbusters. If you're an SEO expert right now, gangbusters, right? These are all services that have gone through the roof in terms of demand, right? Um, uh, sales automation, gone through the roof. Lead management. Conversion rate optimization, gone through the roof. E-commerce, marketing, Facebook ads, AdWords, Google My Business uh, is gone through the roof. All these services are on the climb, right? Businesses are demanding and spending a lot of time and energy going through these services. And there's this massive skill shortage. So like all these businesses don't know where to look, right? Like it's really weird, you know, uh, if I, I'm in the internet marketing space, if I'm not advertising online, then I don't, ex I don't exist. I cannot tell you how many Facebook people I know don't run their own Facebook ads. I mean, it's crazy, right? Like if you know Facebook ads works and you're a Facebook ad specialist, your calendar should be freaking full, right? Because you're an advert, you're a Facebook expert, right? Like if you can't generate the leads for yourself, how the hell are you going to generate them for your clients, <laughs> right? So to me, there's no shortage of opportunities in the market. There's no shortage. Uh, and the, the key thing... And the easiest thing, a lot of people, this is the avoiding thing. If I look at people who do this really well, and I'm, I'm about to hop on a, an appointment here, if I see people who do this really well, they're fo focusing on what I call an account-based marketing process. They're targeting the clients they want to work with and engaging in a relationship with that client by providing the idea or addressing the problems or the challenges and walking through a cadence of that communication and they're picking up clients that will invest five, 10. You know, we got one client the other day, $150,000, made a $150,000 sale, and the client paid up front for freaking email marketing. Email marketing, right? So, you know, that shows you the type of revenue or cash that's out there with companies that are wanting to invest in their marketing. You know, anybody who's running ads right now needs lead management. Anybody who's... Um, uh, Right now, posting content, posting content on LinkedIn, they need marketing help. They need the strategy part of that process. What is the purpose? What are the conversion elements? What's the result that you're looking for? Uh, marketing is a process where, you, where it's a process of understanding, right? If you don't understand, if you haven't got the right message, you fail. If you haven't got the right target, if you haven't got the message to market match, the product market fit, and then an optimized sales process, these are the three core factors. If you don't have those three things in line, it's not working for you. So I've often sat there and said to clients, how's it going, right? You're in three places. You're either drifting down and you're out, you're coasting, staying stable, or you're made a decision and you're moving up. In the three areas, the last six months of your business life, where are you? Are you drifting up? Are you sticking, are you plateauing? Are you out, right? Where are you? Now, if you're out and you're plateauing, you're dying. So you keep doing what you're doing, you're stuck. Change what you're doing, think about what you're doing, get more clear about your customer, engage the market, do the homework, do the real work, and then you'll start to see a market. One thing I know, one of the reasons why businesses fail, and one of the reasons why our businesses fail, is we don't have an offer in front of anybody. If we don't have an offer out there, people can't buy it. 
Does that make sense? If you don't offer it, they can't buy it. If they can't see your offer, they can't buy it. If nobody has your offer in front of them, they can't buy it. Well, if, the, if you don't have that out there, how are you in business? It's impossible, right? So the key here, even for us, is we need to become visible to our market, to our clients. And the way to become visible is to build those relationships to touch point, right? You know, lead with the value, open the door, ask the question, would this be useful? Yes or no? If it is, let's see how it fits, right? Let's, let's qualify and work together, right? That's people are looking for that type of relationship right now. What most people are doing is they're just getting bombarded with message after message after message. And they're going, hey, you're another lead guy. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't be like another lead guy. My vision for I'm not another coach that wants to just give you leads and give you appointments for your marketing business. That's not what I am. I want to actually build a real business with you. I want to actually see you scale that business. So you're actually having something that's solid, that's worth something that if you walked away, it still operates without you. That's my dream for the people that I work with. Right. I want to actually give them something that actually supports their aspirations, not, you know, let's go and make some money tomorrow. Yeah, because that's really short lived. That doesn't pay for what's going to happen. And last time I checked, I want to be around for a long time, not a short time. <laughs> yeah, you know, so so where your focus is, where your intent is, if you convey that message to the people that you serve, they will be led by you. They'll buy. So when you ask me what's the hottest market, the market that needs to acquire customers right now is a hot market. The market that needs to capitalize on revenue per customer that's a hot market. The market that needs to retain, to resell and to upsell its clients, that's a hot market. I've just described every business on the planet for you, right? Right? Including I've described every business <laughs> on the planet, right? So, so, so then the question goes, how? How do they acquire? How do they maximize revenue per customer? How do they retain, resell, upsell? With what you do, how does what you do impact on acquisition, on increased revenue, on that part, on the retain, resell, upsell, right? How do you impact? Because that's where, that's the in, right? If I can help you acquire more at a lesser cost and make a profit, that's a good deal. We're in. If I can make sure you're upselling, cross-selling, uh, uh, educating, providing value, asking the customer to buy more, that's uh, increased revenue per customer. If I can help you to retain, to resell, to upsell, to educate, to get them to buy more by knowing you better so they don't go elsewhere and you uh, keep that customer for as long as possible, that's going to make a direct impact to revenue. So how do you, how does what you do impact on those three key areas of a business? That's all you've got to talk about. And if you have that conversation, people go, I get it. That's what I want. That's why I'm doing Facebook advertising with you. That's why I want to do AdWords. That's why I need Google My Business to get an extra 30, 40 leads. Make sense? Makes sense. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for asking the question, Miles. I look forward to you on the call. For those who haven't, go to calljohnlogo.com. Uh, I will see you there. With that, I want to say thanks. I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you tomorrow. Same time, same bad channel. We're going to do part two of appointments. Take care, everybody.